These are some of the most fascinating and significant findings that have ever come out of Egypt, and we're going to bring them to you because it's our duty as citizens of the world to do so. We hope you brought your history hat because you're about to journey through Egypt's 10 greatest discoveries. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm American Eye, and I'm going to be your guest host right here on Taltanic. Enjoy the video. Number 10, Valley of the Golden Mummies. So to kick things off here, we thought we'd just go ahead and show you this gigantic burial site that's located the Bahariya Oasis. Zahi Hawass and his team of Egyptians recovered roughly 250 mummies over a period of only a few seasons. Said mummies were buried at the site for approximately 2,000 years, and there are more of them. The excavator guesstimated that the number to be around 10,000 or more mummies, so this place definitely has to be haunted. A lot of the 2,000-year-old mummies were in pretty good condition and were decorated with a lot of different styles, although there are about four main styles at Bahariwa. This includes lots and lots of artifacts, including jewelry, jars, coins, and pottery. It's a site packed full of history and mummies, and help archaeologists and scientists learn more about the different periods of ancient Egypt. Can you imagine stumbling upon 10,000 bodies? Um, no thank you. Number 9. Unfinished Obelisk This here obelisk is the most massive known ancient obelisk ever. It can be found in Aswan, Egypt, in the northern region of the stone quarries. It's approximately one-third larger than any other ancient Egyptian obelisk, and if it had been finished, it would have weighed roughly 1,200 pounds and would have stood 137 feet. It was created under the orders of Hatshepsut, and it's thought that it was probably constructed in order to complement the Lateran obelisk. This was used to stand at Karnak, but was brought to the Lateran Palace in Rome. The entire project was abandoned when cracks began to appear in the granite it's made out of. The bottom part of the obelisk is still attached to the bedrock from which it was carved. It's aged quite well and shows clearly various marks from the tools workers use to carve it. This gives some excellent insight into stone working techniques used by the ancient Egyptians and makes the site basically invaluable to researchers into the ancient world. Number 8. Abu Simbel Temples Whoa, check out these impressive rock temples that are found in a village called Abu Simbel in Nubia, southern Egypt. They're gigantic and they're located just hanging out on the bank of Lake Nasser. They were first carved out of the rocky mountainside way back during the 19th century while Pharaoh Ramses II was reigning. These massive temples act as monuments to said king and Nefertari, his queen. They were built to commemorate their accomplishments and the victory of the Battle of Kadesh. What's crazy is that where they sit today is not where they sat in the beginning. In 1968, the entire complex was moved to an artificial hill that sits high above the Aswan High Dam Reservoir. Otherwise, it would have been submerged underwater when Lake Nasser was created. Also, the temples kind of disappeared for a time and were all but forgotten. They became covered in sand over time and left to the elements until their rediscovery in 1813. How does one just forget and lose these temples? Number 7. KV-17 This here tomb is known by a few different names, including the Tomb of Apis, Belzoni's Tomb, and the Tomb of Samus, son of Nechos. It's situated in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt and is the tomb of a 19th dynasty pharaoh, Pharaoh Seti I to be exact. It just so happens to be one of the best and most well-decorated tombs in the entire valley, but it's unfortunately closed to the public at this point in time because of damage. But if you hold a Luxor Pass or a 1000 EGP entry ticket, you can still go and see it. The tomb was damaged when the translator of the Rosetta Stone, Jean-Francois Champollion, removed a wall panel. More things were removed in the 1800s. There have also been many wall collapsings and crackings due to excavations that took place in the 1950s and 60s. Hopefully this magnificent thing can manage to stand the test of time though. It's also the longest and most interesting tomb in the valley. It measures 450 feet and has some genuinely well-preserved reliefs, 9 of its 11 chambers in the room. The sarcophagus of Pharaoh Seti I was removed in 1824 and placed in the Sir John Sewan Museum in London. Here's for hoping another 10,000 years, KV-17. Number 6. Deir el Medina This village in Egypt was once a home to the people who worked on and created many tombs in the Valley of the Kings during the New Kingdom of Egypt. This period of time happened between the 18th and 20th dynasties. The men who worked here were typically called servants in the place of truth, and the ancient name of the settlement itself was Set Mat, which translates to the place of truth. 
It was during the Christian era when the Temple of Hathor got converted into a church that the name Deir el Medina popped up, as it means the monastery of the town. The site was excavated thoroughly between 1905 and 1909 by Ernesto Schiaparelli. This excavation uncovered lots and lots of ostraca, which is basically just broken pieces of pottery. Then between 1922 and 1951, the whole site was excavated by Bernard Bruyere and his French team. It was then that the true importance of the village came to light. It's located across the river from what is now Luxor on the west bank of the Nile and helped greatly in studying community life in the ancient world. No other comparable site has provided so much insight into the conditions of an ancient Egyptian community such as Deir el Medina. Number 5. The Great Pyramid of Giza Now this one isn't really a major discovery or anything considering it was never lost. We mean, how could you lose one of those pyramids? But the Great Pyramid is one of Egypt's most important and significant landmarks and is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It's believed that the pyramid was built as a tomb and was put together piece by piece over a period of 10 to 20 years, or by aliens. At the time of its completion, it was the tallest human-made structure on planet Earth and it remained as such for more than 3,800 years. Do you know that it actually used to be bulkier than it is now? That was because at one point it was covered by limestone casing stones, but over time those fell away. What's left now is the core structure. It's believed that the pyramid itself was built by the fourth dynasty, Pharaoh Khufu, and was used as his tomb. Talk about being utterly vain. Number 4. TT320, DB320, who knows? TT320, which was once upon a time known as DB320, is also known as the Royal Cash. The Royal Cash is a tomb in ancient Egypt that is found in the Theban necropolis next to Deir Abari. Want to know why it was known as the Royal Cash? Well, it's because it contained the final resting place of High Priest Amun Pinajev II. It also had his wife and some other other close family members. In total, there are mummified remains of more than 50 different kings and queens from the New Kingdom. There's also members of royalty found here, including the funeral equipment used in their mummifications. It was also later used in the 21st dynasty as a cache for royal mummies from that time. In the beginning, it was thought to be the tomb that belonged to the queen from the 18th dynasty, but upon further exploring, they found out that she was actually placed near the entrance, indicating that she had been put in last. They went a little bit deeper and found mummies from before then, which meant that it wasn't her tomb after all. At least it was reported though in 1881, but it's believed that the El Rasul family probably found out closer around 1871 considering several items from the tomb showed up on the antiquities market back in Luxor in 1874. Number 3. Tutankhamun Now it's no secret that the discovery of King Tutankhamun, aka King Tut, is a significant and important discovery in Egyptian history. King Tut was a really young pharaoh whose tomb was in the Valley of the Kings, and the reason it's so popular and well known is because all the valuable antiquities were found inside. KV-62 is the designation for King Tut's tomb. It was discovered a long long time ago, way back in 1922 by Howard Carter. It managed to escape the tomb clearances that happened near the end of the 20th dynasty because it ended up underneath workmen's huts that were built during the Ramseyside period. Before it was discovered in 1922, the tomb had been robbed and then resealed twice and then left in total disarray. Though it was small and compact, it contained a lot of stuff, a lot of valuable stuff. It's gone down in history as one of the most important discoveries in Egypt ever. We'd be willing to bet that King Tut is one of the first things that come to mind when you think of ancient Egypt, right? Number 2. The Cairo Manuscript This thing was a pain in the butt to get reconstructed, but its importance cannot be ignored. The 4,000-year-old leather manuscript is both the longest and the oldest leather-bound manuscript from ancient Egypt. It contains many interesting things too. Spells, lots of drawings of supernatural and divine beings, many new religious texts, and more can be found within the pages of this book. Keep in mind that this book predates the Book of the Dead. It was discovered in fragments scattered along the shelves of the Cairo Museum in 2015. It had sat on those shelves for who knows how long, but the guess is that it was wholly forgotten about from the time of the Second World War. Some of those who actually had direct contact with the book either perished during or afterwards. Crazy how such an important manuscript can just be set up on a shelf and become forgotten about. You'd like to think they keep better tracks of those things, right? And number one, the Khufu ship. This thing was quite the find as it's a full, intact vessel that dates back to ancient Egypt times. It was found right at the Great Pyramid of Giza, sealed in a pit in the Giza Pyramid Complex. The reason it's called the Khufu ship is because it's believed that it was built by King Cheops, aka King Khufu. 
This was a pharaoh of the old kingdom of Egypt during the 4th dynasty. The ship was buried alongside many other grave goods, so it could be used in the afterlife. But it was buried near mummies and didn't contain any in itself. The ship is 143 feet long and 19.5 feet wide. This was one of two ships that were rediscovered by Kamal el Malak back in 1954. It's been untouched by human hands since that time. It's been on display at the Giza Pyramid Complex, an especially built museum, since 1982. The ship's discovery has also been described as one of the greatest in ancient Egyptian history. Wow, now that was a great video. You know where else to find some great videos? Right here on my channel, American Eye. I'll see you there.